Congratulations and thank you for the purchase of your Freedom Line sawmill. For the video that follows for the assembly, this is going to be the operator side, which is A. This is the discharge side, which is B. For any questions, contact the link below. Unpacking your mill. Work area should be clean and as level as possible for ease of assembly. Remove and separate all light parts. Engine prep. Remove engine from packaging. Remove crankshaft bolt and discard. Remove and discard the key stock that is provided with the engine. Install three spacer washers on the crankshaft. Use the shorter key stock that is provided by Hudson and install on the crankshaft. Install the clutch. Locate the clutch bolt provided by Hudson and put Loctite on the clutch bolt. Locate the serrated washer, flat washer, and lock washer. Install as shown. Tighten the bolt to install the clutch. Add engine oil as recommended by the engine manufacturer. Add the oil about halfway on the dipstick. Locate A and B cage assembly. In upper winch bracket, holding cage side A and B, install upper winch bracket and install hardware loosely. Once bolts are installed, cage will support itself. Locate center support beam Install center support beam with hardware. Snug all hardware. Measure top and bottom of the lift tubes, inside to inside of cage, A and B. The measurement will be between 21 and 7 eighths to 22 and a 16th of an inch. This measurement must be equal on top and bottom of the lift tube. It does not matter what the measurement is as long as the top and bottom measurement are within a 32nd of an inch. If the measurement is off, shim washers can be added. Reference the end of the video for instructions on this. Install mill head. Locate the mill head and support 18 inches off the ground. In the video, we are using a shop stool. Loosely bolt upright A and B to the mill head using a half inch bolts, nuts, and washers provided. There should be one washer between the mill head and the upright A and B. Installing the tension bolt, put the bolt through the frame, then add a cup washer, followed by a thrust bearing and the second cup washer. Cups should be facing each other. Then the nut. You must install these in a correct order Reference the end of the video to see the incorrect way. Snug all bolts evenly. Measure the lift tube top and bottom again to ensure they are equal. Tighten all bolts. Installing the winch assembly. Install winch on winch bracket with the two bolts provided and tighten the bolts. Next you will install 
the winch handle. Thread the handle onto the winch, then locate the winch handle hardware. Bolt, washer, spacer, and spring. Start the bolt, then with a pair of pliers, clamp the winch shaft for the tightening of the bolt for the handle. Installing cable guide assembly. You'll have a shoulder bolt, two nylon spacer washers with the cable guide. Install a nylon washer on each side of the cable guide. Finishing with a flat washer and a nylock nut to hold the assembly into place and tighten. Installing winch cables. Locate the winch cables. There will be one short cable and one long cable. The long cable will have a loop at the end of the cable which will be used to install the cable to the winch bale with hardware provided. The shorter cable will be installed on the opposite side of the winch bale. It will have a crimp end on it. Pull through till the end reaches the bale. The longer cable goes under the bale across the mill over the cable guide and down to the discharge side. Shorter cable will go straight down to the operator's side. Run both cables through eye bolts. Install cable clamps. Snug but do not tighten. Install two clamps per cable. Wrap the cables, one relief wrap on the bale. Tighten the cable clamps. After winch and cables are installed, check head for binding. Lift head up and let back down. If head is binding, cables must be adjusted evenly. First take the drive belt and put it on the drive side frame. This will enable you to install the belt later. Locate the wheel shaft and bearings. Use the half inch bolt and two half inch washers, one thick and one thin, a half inch lock washer and a half inch nut. The thin washer goes on the top under the head of the bolt. The bolts will go through the frame into the bearing, then the thick washer, the lock washer, and then the nut. Repeat the process on the other side. Snug all eight bolts, measuring from wheel to the mill head on engine side should be one inch. Band wheel vertical alignment. The mill head will have to be on a level surface. Use a level to check and see if the mill head is vertically aligned correctly. If it's not, Reference the end of the video for further instructions. Installing the idler wheel assembly. Use a shoulder bolt with a large USS 3 8 flat washer on the end of the bolt. Insert it through the frame and add the other USS large flat washer. Then idler pulley, an SAE small flat washer, and then the nut. Do not tighten the idler wheel assembly yet. Installing the engine, use the four 5 16 bolts provided with flat washers under the head of the bolt and finish with a flat washer, lock washer, and nut on the bottom. Tighten bolts. Drive wheel to clutch alignment. Place straight edge on face of band wheel and align with clutch. About 3 16 gap between straight edge and side of clutch pulley. Band wheel alignment. Once drive wheel is aligned with clutch, you'll align operator side A with drive side 
B, wheel. Both wheels must be flush on straight edge. Install drive belt around clutch and over idler pulley. Take belt about two thirds around band wheel, leaving top one third off. Do not install around band wheel at this time. Measurement from the top of the drive belt to the top of the band wheel should be approximately four inches. Drive belt idler pulley will have to be adjusted for this measurement. Once adjusted, roll belt on turning band wheel. Once on, deflection should be no more than a half inch with five pounds. Start engine, run and check for belt alignment. Drill and set the shafts. Remove one set screw from the pillow block bearing using a 5/32ths Allen wrench. Using a quarter inch drill bit, drill 3/32ths in the shaft. Clean threads with compressed air. Apply Loctite to set screw. Reinstall. This will be done on all four bearings. Drilling and setting will hold shaft for moving in the bearings. Install Zerk fittings into the frame and pre-drilled holes at the tensioning system. Use needle nose pliers to hold Zerk fitting and tap with hammer. Grease the tensioning system, slide back and forth to apply grease. Unfold band blade as shown. Installing band blade. Install blade on band wheels, making sure teeth are facing towards discharge side B. Snug blade with tensioning bolt. Do not set tension yet. Turn the blade in direction rotation towards discharge side B. For blade alignment, use large punch or steel bar with hammer to tap the bearings in toward the engine to align the band blade. If the blade is running off the back side of the wheel, you can align by tapping the front bearing if the blade is running off the front side of the wheel, you must tap the back bearing. Once blade is aligned, tighten all bolts and pillow block bearings. Tension blade to 35 foot-pounds. Recheck blade alignment when done. Install pillow block bearing stop bolts. These are 3 8 by 3 inch long bolts. On the bolt, install a nut, then a washer. Slide the bolt through the mill head frame, then add another nut on the other side. Installing the off deck bolts. Using the 3 8 by 3 inch long tap bolts, adding a nut after you threaded it through the frame, install on each side. Off deck adjustment is done later once mill head is on the track. Installing the track wheels. Using a large shoulder bolt, two spacer washers, and a large washer. Large flat washer will be against the frame. The wheels will be on the inside of the mill frame. Once bolts are through the frame, add nylock nut and tighten. Measure wheels so they are 20 and 3 quarter inches center to center. If it does not measure 20 and 3 quarter inches, reference the end of the video for further instructions. This will complete the inner head assembly. Putting the track together. If you are using the standard aluminum track, you will need support. In the video, we are using 6x6 timbers, not included. Start by setting the 6x6 timbers up and attaching together and making sure they are square. Place all the aluminum side rails on the 6x6 timbers. They should be 20 and 3 quarters inches apart. There are three 3 8 holes 
and the side rails. They should be facing down. The 3 8 holes are for lagging the track to the timbers. There will be a 3 quarter inch hole on each side. This is used for attaching the log dogs. Place cross members 24 inches apart between side rails, making sure cant stops are on the discharge side. Cant stops are the welded tabs on the cross members. Once the track is laid out on the 6x6s, check for square. Once the track is square, mount track to the 6x6s using lag bolts. Lag bolts are not included. Install all four end stops as shown. At this point, you can put the mill on the track. Installing the log dogs. Installing log dog assembly. Backstop should be on the same side as the cant stop, and that is the B side of the mill. The log dog will be on the A side. Install dog axle and tighten set bolt. Blade guide installation. Prep the guide by loosening the Allen bolt in the center of the guide. The black loop bracket gets mounted to the guide on the operator's side, A, using a quarter 20 bolt provided. This threads in from the top of the guide and will mount the bracket to the guide. Insert guide pin into the frame with offset facing toward outside of the mill frame. Place guide over the blade. Move the guide pin into the position and slide guide onto pin. Repeat on other side. Take a piece of paper and place it over and under the blade. Then holding guide shoes to the paper, tighten the Allen bolt. The guide will now be adjusted and set. Make sure all bolts are tight when done. There will be an eighth of an inch space between the backstop bearing and the back of the blade. Installing blade guards. Blade guard will be installed using a 3 8 flat nylon washer placed on stud. Place the guard on, then washer, lock washer, and nut to hold the blade guard in place. To install the end guards, simply slide the guard onto the studs located in the ends of the mill. Then using the large flat washer, lock washer, and 3 8 nut to hold in place, tighten bolts. Off deck setting. Thread off deck bolts into frame to achieve a 1 inch off deck setting on each side. Make sure blade is tight, measuring from the bottom of the blade to the top of the cross member. This should measure one inch on each side. If the measurement is off, your off deck setting bolts can be adjusted to achieve the one inch. Once that is set, you will set the cables so they are picking evenly. Raise mill head up around four inches. Measure each side and adjust so each side is proper. This can be done by adjusting nuts on the eye bolts. Adjust the cables on each side accordingly so they measure the same on each side. Tighten nuts on eye bolt. Installing the scale sticker. The scale sticker will be installed on the winch bracket. 
From the discharge side, it should measure one inch from the side of the bracket to the start of the scale sticker. Installing the scale indicator. This will be installed with a cable clamp. It will be installed at the one inch mark on the scale. The lube tank has a bracket that is welded to the top of the mill for the tank to sit in. It is held down with the lashing strap provided. Install the lashing strap and cut to length. Installing the lube line, start lube line from the fitting at the bottom of the tank. Next you'll have to cut the line to install the shutoff. Zip tie in place. You'll have to cut the line again to add another barbed fitting. This will allow you to take your line apart to change the blade. The end of the line gets attached to the lube bracket on the guide. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. Enjoy your new Freedom Line Sawmill. Corrections for improper assembly or measurements. Cage measurements. Use the extra washer and a cage assembly hardware kit to correct any offset measurements. If needed, the shim washers will be installed in the inside of the center support beam. Recheck the measurement is equal on top and bottom of the lift tubes. Vertical wheel alignment. Using a level to check to see if the mill head is vertically aligned correctly. If it is not, you may have to install shims between the bearing and the mill head. The manufacturing process during welding may cause differences in inner head frame. Track wheel alignment. If it does not measure 20 and 3 quarter inches between track wheels, center to center, alignment washers can be added or subtracted to achieve this measurement. Tension bolt assembly. First assembly is correct. Second assembly is incorrect. Cups must be facing each other. You can see the larger space between the two washers.